If you would, please, join me again in Proverbs chapter 1. The next several verses which we will look at is what I will call the warning of a father. Look with me at verse 8, where Solomon says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. In verse 8, Solomon calls his son to hear or to give audience to, to allow him to speak, to be attentive to the instruction of his father. As I read this, I cannot help but think of our Heavenly Father, which allowed Solomon to write this proverb under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And our Heavenly Father is pleading with believers today to just hear and to heed the instruction which He has for us. Do you know that everything that you need for your daily life can be found in the very pages of Scripture? And God simply wants us to hear and to heed that instruction. He pleads not only to hear the instruction, but he says, forsake not that instruction. How sad it is to see Christians who continually hear the word of God, but they choose to not heed it or to follow it. James tells us in James 1.22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. The only ones who are deceived when we forsake the things of God is ourselves. How important it is for the child of God to stay by the truth of the Word of God. Look with me now at verse number 9, where Solomon gives his son a reason for keeping his instruction and his law. Verse 9 reads, For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck, hearing, keeping, and not forsaking the instructions from our parents, will be as wearing fine jewelry in one's life. This might not make sense to us now, but in Bible times, they would wear chains of gold and other fine jewelry about themselves to show honor. What Solomon is teaching us is that paying heed to parental advice will be that which brings valuable and beautiful adornment to one's life. Ecclesiastes 8.1 reads, A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. If Solomon's son were to just take this wisdom and to take this instruction, it would bring grace and honor upon his life. The warning of Solomon changes now from just hearing the father's instruction to now giving specific instruction to his son. Verse number 10, Solomon writes, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. That old English word entice simply means to seduce or lead astray to tempt or to urge. That is exactly what sin does to us. It leads us astray from the things of God. The Bible teaches us that sin is pleasurable for a season. It doesn't last long, but it does tempt us. It does lead us astray. There is a time when sin, sin is enjoyable, but that fruit and that outcome of sin is far greater than the pleasures enjoyed from that sin. Solomon is pleading with his son to simply say no. Today, the message is the same. Say no to sin every time. It is imperative that we have more Christians take a stand and say no to sin. Solomon then gives examples of what the sinners might say or might do to entice his son. Look at verses 11 through 14. Verse 11 starts out, If they say, Come, let us lay wait, for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. The sinners are open. They're honest about what they will do, but they give empty and false promises in verse 13. The sin that they so long and desire to commit will not bring them gain. It will not bring them fortune, but rather it will bring them destruction. Solomon very plainly tells his son in verse 15, My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. He tells in verse 10 to say no. Consent not to their sin. In verse 15, he tells us to not go. Don't walk in the way with the evil men. This verse brings to my mind that old Sunday school song that we would sing as children. 
Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little feet, where you go. Solomon tells his son now of the path that the wicked are taking. In verse 16, he says, For their feet run to evil. They make haste to shed blood. Verse 17, he says, Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily in their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. The outcome of the sinner is settled. There is no question about it. Their destruction is imminent. The sinner knows what the end of his sin will bring, yet due to the pleasure he receives from the sin, he will continue to do it. Verse 17 tells us that it would be vain to set out a net for a bird, because if the bird was watching, the bird would have enough sense to not fall into that trap. But the sinners are not so. The sinner, the wicked person, the evil person, does not have that sense. They see the folly of their sin, and yet they continue in that very sin. Their destruction is certain. Verse 18 tells us they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily in their own lives. The lesson here is this. Whoever breaks God's law slays himself. In verse 19, it sums it up that it is not just those who afflict and persecute the weak. It's not just those who shed innocent blood, but rather it is the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain. Solomon is teaching that sin has consequences. All sin has consequences. All sin yields the fruit of death. James 1.15 explains to us, When lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. This principle that Solomon is warning his son about in Proverbs 1 is a principle that is found throughout all of Scripture. Sin always brings death. Sin always brings destruction. Sin always cripples and sin never satisfies. It is important that each of us take these warnings from God and apply them to our lives so that we, just like Solomon, can apply this warning that he gives to his son. When sinners entice thee, consent thou not.